So today, it seems pretty obvious that DNA is the genetic material, but for a long time, scientists did not know this fact. They knew there was some type of material that could be inherited, but what exactly it was, they were not sure. In fact, being able to pinpoint it to nucleic acids has been a fairly recent discovery from about 60 years ago. To see how far we've come since in genetics work is really quite extraordinary. So in this video, we discuss the major experiments that helped piece together the structure and function of DNA. We've actually broken it down into three videos so that they can be shorter um, because there's a lot of information to cover. So it begins in 1927 when Griffith discovered bacterial transformation. And he was experimenting on mice and two strains um, with two strains of bacteria, a pathogenic strain and a non-pathogenic strain. And he conducted four experiments with his mice and his bacteria. And the first one, he injected path the pathogenic strain within his mice and all his mice died. The second one, he injected non-pathogenic strain of bacteria and all the mice lived, they stayed healthy because there was no pathogenic material to kill off the mice. In the third experiment, he heated up the pathogenic strain, which effectively killed the pathogenic bacteria, injected it within the mice, the mice all lived. The fourth is the most interesting. He took this heated pathogenic strain, um, the dead pathogenic strain, mixed it with non-pathogenic live bacterial cells, injected it into the mice together, and the mice died. And then what Griffith found when he took a blood sample of the dead mice, there were live pathogenic strains within the blood. So somehow the live pathogenic strain, the live non-pathogenic strain, had picked up pathogenic material from the dead pathogenic bacteria. And in 1944, an experiment conducted by Avery, McLeod, and McCarty confirmed that the material transferred had been DNA. And we know today that bacteria transformation involves the incorporation of DNA from one bacteria into another's bacterial genome, such as shown in this diagram. So here's um, when a bacterial cell is killed, its genome is broken up into chunks, and then a live bacterial cell can take one of these DNA chunks, incorporate into its genome, and effectively become a pathogenic cell from being non-pathogenic. So here's where we end our first video, and please check out our second.